In this tutorial, we're going to look at some formatting that you can do if you're working directly in Google Drive in a document. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on things that primarily come up in English 120 and 121 classes um, and at EMU, and also we'll be looking at MLA formatting. If you are doing APA for your paper, some of the formatting requirements will be different, but you can still see how to do the basic things in Google Drive. Okay, so to start off, I'm going to go into my paper that I've pre-created for formatting and I've created it with the basic information that you need like the header, the title, um, I have a couple paragraphs here with a few with a subheading um, and a works cited page but I left everything else and this is just a sample paper I got off the internet I left everything else as is single spaced I didn't do any other formatting so that we can look at some of the formatting that we can do in Google Drive. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is put it in the basic acceptable formatting for MLA. And that is Times New Roman 12 point font double spaced. And that is really the same across the board for, I believe, all citation systems. So to do that, we're going to start with just edit select all. And then you're going to, in whatever order you want, start changing these things. So I'm going to do Times New Roman, change the font size, which defaults at 11, to 12. And then I'm going to double space it, which you can do over here where it says line spacing. We're going to make it 2.0. Okay, so you see already this is starting to look a little bit more like a regular paper. Now, for MLA, a few important things. Your information goes on the upper left-hand side. So you'll have your name, um, usually also instructor name, date, and class. And the title gets centered. So I'm going to just click on this line here, or you can highlight it. And we're going to go up to a line center, which is right here. And it looks pretty much like the same on Microsoft Word. Okay, so now you're seeing that it's looking like a regular paper. Now I do want to note that um, in MLA you don't put any additional spacing. So the space between here and here is just one normal double space. You do not hit enter an extra time. The same goes between the title and the first line of the text. There's no extra space in there. It's the same spacing that you have between all of the lines. That also is the same for any subtitles that you have. You just have them normal. You don't add a whole bunch of extra spacing. Um, for my purposes, I like to tend to bold things, although I believe the standard is that you just leave it as normal. Um, but if it looks like you can't see it very well, um, you know, if you're not getting too particular, sometimes you can add a space or you can bold it. But I believe the standard is just double spacing throughout with no extra changes. Okay, so that gives us the basics. The other thing that we have to do in MLA citations is add a header. And the header is your last name plus the page number. And you want this on every single page, including the first. So you don't want to have to try to type this in on every page. Instead, you want to use the page header function. And there's a function for this in Microsoft Office also. But for our purposes in Google Drive, you're going to go to Insert, Page Number, top of the page and you'll see it automatically puts it up on the right here so the only thing we have to do is add the last name so I'm gonna put my cursor before the page number type my last name and then a space now this automatically made it Arial 11 so I'm gonna go through and change this again to the same type that we're using for everything else so now this is correct and if I go down to page 2 you'll see it automatically populates so if this was a 10 page paper it would keep going through pages 1 through 10 automatically I don't have to do anything else specific Okay, so this is the basic paper we've got. Now everything's pretty much formatted correctly. Um, and I want to look at the Works Cited page. The Works Cited page should always be the last page of your paper. It does not, however, count towards page numbers. So if this is page 8, where the Works Cited page starts, then your paper is technically 7 pages. But we want to keep it in 
um, the actual paper, not have it as a separate document. And this is particularly important when you're using Google Docs or Google Drive because you're not able to just print them out and staple them together. They're going to be in two separate places if you don't keep them on the same page. Um, but since we want it on the last page, instead of just hitting enter, what's easier to do is go down to your Works Cited page and hit insert page break. And what that will do is it basically tells this page that wherever the work cited starts is always on its own new page. So that way if you go back through, so here we've got a little bit of information on two, so it pops it down to page three. But if you go through and you add another, you know, three or four pages here, it will keep moving the work cited page to the very last page. So that way you don't have to mess around with it. Now for the Works Cited page, I've got the citations already in here. Um, you leave the Works Cited title over on the far left. And what we need to do though is create a hanging indent. Unfortunately, Google Docs or Google Drive at this point does not have an easy function like Microsoft Word does. So we have to do it manually. So how we're going to have to do this is you want to highlight your citations. You don't want to hit like select all because you don't want your entire page to be in a hanging indent. Okay, now what we're going to have to do here is play with these little guys here. So this, if you see, will move things around. Now a hanging indent is basically the opposite of a normal indent. So if we look at a normal paragraph indent, you see how the first line is in about a half an inch and then the rest of the lines go on the margin, the one inch margin. So the hanging indent is going to do exactly the opposite. So we want it at a half an inch in on the second line. So we're going to start by moving the whole thing over. But then I'm going to move just this top one back to here. So basically this little arrow is saying where the bulk of the, the paragraph would go and the little line is telling you where the first line goes. So you can move these around manually to create your hanging indent. So now anything in this section, the first line is going to be far to the margin and any subsequent line in that paragraph until you hit enter is going to be indented in half an inch. So now we have a hanging indent on our Works Cited page. So those are really the basics. You also have, you know, some normal functionality like you have in Microsoft Word, like you can italicize, you can underline, bold, um, change text color, which, you know, you wouldn't necessarily need to do for most normal papers. Um, you also have the ability to define a word, um, to do word count, which can be helpful um, if you aren't sure if you're meeting a requirement for a paper. Um, you can, you know, use paragraph styles like subtitles and headings and whatnot. Um, list styles, so if you wanted to create some sort of a list that was in Roman numerals, you could do that here. Um, you also have the ability to add inserts um, or insert images, links, drawings. Um, this could be particularly helpful for more multi-genre projects if you want to have pictures included. And also here you have the ability to add a comment in. And this can be very helpful if you're doing reader review directly on the computer. You can highlight any section of the text and go to insert comment. Or, and I like to do, is if you get used to just hitting control alt m, you can go through them much faster. And then a little comment will pop up. Oops, I accidentally clicked off that. A little comment will pop up over here. And I'm going to expand this out so that it's not going to keep disappearing when I try to. There, you can kind of see it. And you can insert comment here and click comment. And then the person will have a comment in their margins. So it can be helpful for commenting on each other's papers or if you want to work on something. If you have a project where you're working in groups or something, you can actually work together on a project. So that's the basics of formatting um, without going into necessarily everything. These are the things that you should need for any major paper in your 120 or 121 classes.